Assalamu alaikum. The traditional way of reporting on scientific research in general, medical research in particular, using the p-value would tell you whether the results are significant or not significant. On the other hand, reporting the results in terms of the effect size, plus or minus the confidence intervals, will provide much more information than just significant or not significant. This presentation is about the effect size, how it's calculated, and its applications. This is what a p-value is meant to do. Tell us whether results are significant or not significant. Take this real-life uh, example from a study on rate of tumor recurrences, pleomorphic adenomas of the protid, in females and in males. There were four recurrences in the 112 females and three recurrences in the 70 males. What does that mean? We do a chi-square test, and the chi-square test would provide a figure at the p-value of 5%. It tells us that the results are not significant. Now, this is just a single cut-off point at the 5% level for the p-value. And that point is arbitrarily chosen. Um, a non-significant result like this does not tell you whether there is actually no difference in the rate of the recurrence between males and females, or that we don't have enough number of cases in the study to detect a small difference. The power of the study is low. On the other hand, if the power of the study is very high because we have used um, in a multicentric study, for example, we have used too many cases, we may detect, we may be able to detect very small changes that are significant statistically, but not significant clinically. The other thing is, by making the question a dichotomy, significant or not significant, a treatment is working or not working, you lose uh, information because um, it is more, much more appropriate to have the, question, the results presented as a continuum rather than just yes or no at a single uh, cutoff point. And this is what the effect size is meant to do. It would quantify things. How big is the difference between two groups, say before and after a treatment, and how strong is the relation between two variables? What is the effect of X on Y? It would, does, it would do this with certain formulas to find the standardized difference between the two groups and present us with a figure, and would also uh, measure the strength of the association between the two variables X and Y, and will provide us with a figure by reporting the results in terms of effect size, would be able to see if the difference between two groups, say before and after a certain treatment, is big enough or meaningful to justify the extra risks involved with um, a new treatment, for example. Also, by reporting the results in terms of the effect size, and the confidence intervals will be providing a range rather than just one cut-off point. And you could see the relationship between different ranges of different groups and whether they overlap or not. Now, how is the effect size quantified? There are different ways. One of the commonest way is to find out the differences between the means of the two groups and divide that by their pooled standard deviation. So you take out the mean of the after treatment, for example, the mean value here, and uh, subtract from it the mean value of the before treatment, and divide that by the standard deviation, the pooled standard deviations of the two groups. And if there is very small difference between the two groups, or if they are overlapping, almost identical, that is to say, no much difference, then you have a very small uh, number in the numerator divided by the standard deviation will give you a very small fraction. 
So anything less than 0.1 is a trivial effect. It tells you that there is no much difference between the two groups. Even up to 0.3 is still a small uh, effect. But if the differences between the two means is uh, relative to the standard deviation is high enough, like 0.5, this is a large uh, difference between the two groups. If the difference is one standard deviation, you end up with a D equal one. This is a very large difference between the two groups. It will tell you that they are separated. The two means are separated by more than one standard deviation. One other way of estimating the effect size is to see how much of the scores of the two groups are overlapping. Because if there is too much overlap between the two sets of scores, then you could tell that there is no much difference between the two groups. On the other hand, if there is no overlap at all, then you could tell that they are really different and there is a big difference between the two groups. In fact, we are looking into the, how much of the scores are not overlapping. So that if we have at least a third of the scores not overlapping, this is a big difference between the two groups. When the areas that are not overlapping is 55% more than the half, this is very big. And of course, if more uh, of the scores are not overlapping, we have more confidence to say that there is a big difference between the two groups. A third way of estimating the effect size is to see the percentage of scores in this group that is less than the mean of the other group. By definition, the mean of this group would have 50% of the scores of this group less and 50% more. So if you have 50% of this group less than the mean of the green group, then you know that the two uh, scores are almost identical with small differences. But if 90% or 80% of this group is less than the mean of the other group, then this, there is a large difference. If it is about 70% of this group less than the other, then it is a medium difference. When the research study is looking into the relationship between variables rather than differences between groups, you can still get an effect size for correlation between X and Y variables or the regression, the effect of X on Y. Um, the effect size in the correlation and regressions is termed R squared. In this real life example, we're looking into the effect of the size of the pleomorphic adenomas of the parotid on its safety margin. And very large tumors, more than uh, five or six centimeters, have virtually no safety margins at all, whereas very small tumors uh, have a large safety margin. And when you plot the uh, safety margin against the tumor size, you get this, and you can draw a line here that corresponds to a correlation between the two factors of 0.63. This is the co correlation coefficient. When this coefficient is squared, you get 0.40. This is the effect size. The 0.40 here means that the uh, outcome of the uh, safety margin is 40%, 40% dependent on the tumor size. There are other factors that also uh, affect the safety margin of the tumor, including the type of surgery, the relationship to fish and nerve and things like this. But 40% of the outcome is dependent on the uh, size of the tumor because we have squared the uh, correlation coefficient and obtained 0.40 as the effect size. One of the most useful applications of the effect size is its use in the meta-analysis, as we will see later. Here, we would combine results from different reports from different research centers across the world into one single report by adding up the effect size of different uh, reports together, whether the effect size was on a discrete 
events or continuous events. And this is a real life example of how we can use the effect size of different reports, seven different reports from seven uh, different centers to find out one final outcome. These are reports on the mortality rate of uh, modified radical neck dissection against uh, radical neck dissection. And the effect size of the seven reports is shown here. And if there is no effect size at all, like the results are almost identical in this report, you get a zero. If there is a small uh, uh, effect size like 0.3, it will be close to the line of no difference. But if it is away from the line of no difference, like in here, you would have a larger effect size. And there is a way to combine all these effect sizes or these individual effect sizes into one pooled effect size to see if there is actually a difference between this operation or this way of treatment or the other. Now I'll go quickly through examples of how to calculate the effect size in different uh, statistical tests, starting with the uh, simplest chi-squared test. The effect size, either a phi or a Kramer are obtained through certain formulas related to the chi-square figure and the number of the patients in the study. And from these, you could calculate out a certain effect size. And 0.4 is between small and medium, for example. And when we are using analysis of the variance, like ANOVA test, to find differences between different groups, the effect size is called eta squared. And when we are using linear regression models to find out the effect of different variables on a certain outcome, the effect size is again the r squared, the proportion of the uh, outcome that is dependent on one of the predictors. By this, we come to the end of this presentation on the effect size. Why is it useful? How it's calculated and its applications? Salam alaikum.